In the last video we talked a bit about the receptors and how they can help detect change, so detect the stimulus. In this video we're going to cover something a bit related, which is basically how a response happens and what kind of steps need to be taken, um, need to take part to make sure that response can actually happen. So there's going to be like five steps that you need to know. The up point itself says explain that the response to a stimulus involves the stimulus, receptor, messenger, effector and the response. So these five things. So you need to be able to explain how a response happens due to these five things. So remember, stimulus was just a change in the environment. Now, the obvious example would be the one, for example, when it comes to thermoregulation. We mentioned last video, if the temperature is meant to be 37 degrees Celsius, if that's our set point, that's what we want to keep. If it goes up or, or down, so up or down, that would be our stimulus. This is the obvious example, but I'm going to give you one more less obvious example in a second. That's the obvious example. Change in the environment would be a stimulus. So receptors, I think, that detects the change. Remember, in, in blood vessels, you would have a you know, you'd have your heat inside the plasma, and you have your receptors picking up that change. So they can they can sense the temperature. It's like a thermometer of your blood. And so receptors would be the things that detect here. That so they would be the ones who would be detecting. That change. Now the messengers we said that often they're usually neurons, so messenger neurons, not just any neurons but messenger neurons, but sometimes they can also be hormones. But we're going to cover mostly in these videos we also we're going to cover the neuron messengers, not so much the hormonal messengers. But in this case, once we've detected the change for the receptors, we got to actually send the signal on. So we're going to send it on through these neurons. And these neurons were our messengers, right? So messengers are usually neurons. They bring it from one, the message from one place to the next place. And the thing that we have in this diagram, which is the hypothalamus, is not actually in our dot point. So that was the control center. So the control center is the thing that is the actual um, structure that decides what to do with that message. That's the control center. Again, it's something that you don't have to know according to the dot point, but it's good to know that it's usually a control center involved as well. So, for example, if the temperature has gone too high, so if it's, for example, 38 degrees Celsius as opposed to 37 degrees Celsius, then the control center will send a message on to the sweat gland. Right, so the sweat gland in our skin, this is right here, that's the sweat gland. And also to our blood vessels, for example. So this is our, these are our blood vessels. And these are our effectors because they will make the response happen. So the effectors will make the response happen. Remember, they are not the response, make the response happen. So they're not the response, but they will make it happen. An example would be the sweat gland, right? So the sweat gland will produce sweat, which will cool our skin. So the sweat gland is the effector because it will make the response happen. As I just mentioned, the response itself, in this case, would be the sweat that comes onto our skin. So the sweat would be our response. The response is the thing that usually um, it responds it's a reaction to a response to the stimuli. In the case of homeostasis or negative feedback, it will remove the stimuli. So if the temperature has gone up, the response will be to bring it back down. But we're going to see a couple of other examples where the stimuli doesn't always have to be removing. It could be something else as well. Right? So, but remember, a stimuli is something that is a change, and the response is something that responds to that stimuli. It's some response to whatever that change was. And this was a case of thermoregulation that we've gone over already a couple of times. But now I'm going to give you a different example. And that was to do with communication because the actual, the actual tap itself is called communication. So what does communication actually mean? This is more or less a way that we can communicate from one organism, from one organism to the next. So for example, if this person here wants to communicate with this person over here, that's a communication between two people. Now, the reason why I've, I've chosen random colors is because I want to make sure I'm not racist. So I figured if I choose like different colors, then I can show myself to be less of a racist or not. I'm not. I'm not actually racist. I'm just saying that um, I've chosen different colors to make sure I represent all different co people, including people who are orange or or, or whatever else. I, that was a bit of a random fail. Um, all right, so but the basic idea is that we have communication between these two individuals. So we've got one person who's yelling at someone else from behind. 
this person, these are supposed to be the sound waves, right? These are sound waves. But this person needs to actually be able to detect those sound waves. So he needs to have receptors for those sound waves. He needs to be able to send a message to the effector and the effector makes a response happen. I'm gonna go over those steps, right? But the stimulus in this case is a change in the environment. So the stimulus in this case are these sound waves. Right? Beforehand, these sound waves weren't there. So change in the environment. So beforehand, these sound waves weren't there. And as soon as they appear, there's a change. And that's our stimulus. So the sound waves are our stimulus. And they're obviously produced by individual orange. So orange person here. And they're being sent to brown or different other person individual. So we've got sound waves being sent. And the receptors in this person here are picking up that sound. So this is the ear. And the sound will waves will travel through the ear. They will make the eardrum vibrate, which will make all this vibrate. And basically, it will make hairs in the cochlea move. So there's receptors here in the cochlea that will pick up the sound wave. Right? So receptors are in our ear. And these would be mechanoreceptors because when the hair vibrates, that's a mechanical movement, mechanoreceptors. So these, once these hair vibrates, this, the message will get sent on to the, a nerve, which will be the next part, right? So we have a stimulus being the actual sound wave that will be picked up by receptors in the ear. Next part was the messengers, right? So we've got our brain right here. We've got these messenger neurons. We can see here it says the auditory nerve. This is this part here. And once you actually have the receptors picking up that change, the message will get sent all the way to the brain for interpretation. So brain is a control center. Remember that's not an dot point, but the signal gets sent via messenger neurons. So that's your messenger. The actual neurons, the nerves that connect the ear to the brain. That's your messenger. So these would be the nerves that connect nerves that connect ear to brain. The next part would be what your brain decides to do. So your brain decides to send the signal onto an effector. In this case, the person wants to move uh, his neck. He's, he's, someone's yelling him from, from behind. Right? This person, orange person, is yelling at the other person from behind. So he wants to look back and see what's happening. So the next part is that this signal, so the brain decides to send a signal to food, again, messenger neurons, to a muscle, in this case, a neck muscle. So the neck muscle, because it's going to make the response happen, the neck muscle would be the effector. Right? So the, in this case, the neck muscle would be the effector because it will make the response happen. And what is the response? Well, the response itself is, and this is my bad attempt at drawing, that the actual person is facing the direction where the sound came from. Right? So the neck it moved in the direction of where the person came from. So that movement, movement of the neck is the response. But what you can see here, this is a, you have a stimulus. In this case, the stimulus is not obvious to pick up. The stimulus is a change in the environment, which is the sound coming from the person behind, which was not there beforehand, but then is there afterwards because he's, he's making that sound, person in orange. Then the receptors were in the ear. They pick up the change. Then the receptors send a signal on to the control center, but it has to do so for these messenger neurons, these nerves. So these nerves that connect the ear to the brain. And the brain is the control center. It decides what to do. It, just, it decides it wants to move its neck so it can look at that person. So it sends a signal on for these messenger neurons all the way to the effector, which was the neck muscle. In this case, right, the neck muscle will make the response happen. Because when it contracts, it will move its head towards the orange person. And then the response itself is actually the response to stimulus. The stimulus was the, the sound waves. And then the response was that it will move into the direction of the sound waves. So the response was the movement of the neck towards that person. And again, that's just another example of where we have the stimulus receptor messenger effector response, that sequence of events.
leading to the response. So it's not just purely you have a stimulus and then all of a sudden you have a response, but you need to know that there's steps in between. And because of this dot point, you need to be able to explain kind of how this can happen. And you can, in this case, you, do, you do not, don't have to use this example, you could use any example, but you should be able to use example like thermoregulation or whatever else you want to be showing how a stimulus ends up with a response, but also steps in between. But I hope that was useful.